What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and welcome back to part two in a series about how to design and code a responsive landing page from start to finish. What we're gonna be doing today is simple research and discovery. That's the first portion of any project I do, is to actually take the time before you dive in and start designing, you need to understand what you're designing and who you're designing for. Trying to figure out what actually has to be on this website. Is it just written content? Is it images? Is it video? What type of features? Features do they have or value propositions? How do they position themselves as a brand or as a company? Next, we're going to create a really streamlined to-do list. Lastly, we're going to gather inspiration and not necessarily visual inspiration, but we're going to be doing a quick competitive set for the brand or the product itself and seeing what other people are doing in that space. For us, it's a conceptual shoe application where you can shop for shoes on an iOS or an Android device. So we're going to see if we can find some stuff like that. So with all that being said, we're going to kick back on my couch open up a text editor, and we're gonna talk about the requirements and needs of the project. Let's do it. I have a text editor open, and uh, our kind of conceptual app company is really unique. It's called Shoe App. Wow, mind blowing, right? First thing we wanna do is we want to do a, a, a little bit of the project uh, requirements um, and then after that we're gonna do a project uh, checklist okay uh, I have the shoe app and I want to show people um, that it is out there in the world so um, I want to showcase what it does uh, what it does okay I want to as a as a business owner and as the creator of shoe app I'm wanting this website to obviously like the main call to action is for people to go to the iOS or Android store and download. So, um, you know, I'll put like main call to action to download. If they're, you know, per perusing the site a little bit, I would really like them to see, you know, the different like value propositions or key value that we bring, like, or maybe even we'll do like value proposition and we'll do like key features. So I'm thinking all of this, I'm making up on the fly. So maybe some shots of uh, how it works. I think reviews are a real thing, right? We wanna, we wanna create some, some sort of like value there. So uh, let's, let's say customer reviews. Um, uh, how about you? We'll call it user reviews in there. I also think we'd like to show the different brands of shoes, like maybe at a glance, because we're not a very big company right now, but Nike and Adidas, they are. So we want to piggyback off of their good name. I want to display uh, brands. Lastly, I think it would be really fun to offer them some sort of special offer um, that only they get if they either sign up for a newsletter or share something or, so we'll do like special offer and we'll see what we can come up with for that. I can't spell today at all. So there we go, um, we're gonna stop right there. That's the simple project requirements. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the project checklist. So uh, as a project checklist, I want to do like, Obviously, we've said my research. This is the structure. This is what we're going to do to accomplish this project. So we want to do research. Uh, we want to do like a competitive set. Um, we are going to want to do like a wireframe. We're going to want to do our mood board. We're going to mold board. I guess mood board isn't like a real word. So we'll just make it two words. Then we are going to do like low res like mockups. Uh, low res mocks and we're gonna do like high res mocks then we're gonna do um, After we do the high res mocks, I think probably in there somewhere should be like art direction After we have our high res mock-ups, we're gonna want to like export for dev. We're gonna want to set up our dev in environment um, Then we're gonna want to do all of the basics like HTML CSS JavaScript. Well, that's it. I think that that kind of lays out the project checklist, like all the things that we need to do. I feel pretty happy with that. I feel pretty good with what we have going here. We, we now know what the site has to be, like the requirements of what needs to go on the page. We also know how we're gonna accomplish these tasks. And lastly, we're gonna end up this video by just doing like maybe some quick research and see what else is out there. Right off the bat, 
you know, it's always good to start your research with the client itself, with their brand and with all the stuff that they have to work with, their design assets. So what they've handed out to me is the app looks very clean, uh, uses a lot of white and white space, um, but it also, you know, in these dribble shots and these other advertisements, maybe we would even call them, there's a big emphasis on like bright color. It's a very, you know, young, fresh, colorful, energetic look and feel. And so when I do my research in my competitive set, not only am I going to be looking for, um, you know, people who are actually playing in their space, like people who are making shoe sales applications or shoe brands. We're also gonna be looking for visual inspirations that are young, fresh, and bright. I'm gonna fast forward through that process and just show you a bunch of the different assets that I've found, and then after we're done, I'll show you an example of a competitive set that I've made for an actual client. Okay, so we're back. And I found some different kind of like inspirations for not only shoes or shoe brands and shoe companies, but also just some random sites that are using a lot of color, a lot of white space. Now really quickly, I wanna share with you uh, an actual competitive set that I've given to a client and share with you a few thoughts about how you present your competitive set. This is an actual competitive set that I've presented to a client that I'm working with. This competitive set is branded to me, okay? So this is my branding, it's like my background tech my logo, really simple and clean. Number two, it's straight to the point. It, it, it's not a lot of fluff and frills. You don't need to overdo this. Tell them what, what it is. Tell them, you know, in your own language and casual verbiage, what the point of this document is. I do really simple competitive sets. I don't do huge long research projects. So this is page one, let's go to page two. So you can see, I just take full screenshots of certain websites and I'm gonna pop those in there with the URL and these are things that I found in the space that actually relate to the client. If you go down, I'm showing more competitive set, things that I like, things that I think will work for them, things that are good solutions for similar kind of requirements that they're asking for. Then I do a competitive audit, just one or two pages where I point at some of the examples I found and I just write some simple notes. You can see if I zoom in, for this, I'm just telling them like do's and don'ts, like things that, that are important for you to uphold your brand values and your business and, and your kind of like look and feel. Uh, I'm pointing out simple do's and don'ts. That is a competitive set for me. For you, it might be something else, but that's how I work. Well, that's it. That's the research and discovery portion of my process. That's how I kick off any new project. And I did trim things down a little bit so it's a little bit more bite-sized for this video. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. And if you have any thoughts that could help me in my process to make things a little bit better, please leave those down there too. I'm always willing to learn. If you like the video, thumbs up, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. But we got more videos coming in this series, so stick around.